Hi there. Now we're given that f of x then equals 3 plus 4 over e to the x, and it's defined for any real values. So we're being asked to find out the inverse function of f of x, and also to work out what the domain and range are. So to do this, first of all, when it comes to working out the inverse function, what I do is just say let x equal, and wherever I see x's over here, I replace them with y. So let x equal 3 plus 4 over e to the power y. And what I need to do now is make y the subject. So to do that, I'm just going to multiply both sides by e to the power y. So therefore, we get x e to the power y equals 3 e to the power y plus 4. And then if I was to take 3 e to the y from both sides and also factorize as well by pulling out e to the y as a common factor, I'm going to have e to the power y bracket x minus 3, okay, equals the 4. And so therefore, if I divide by x minus 3 to both sides, I'm going to get e to the power y equals 4, all divided by x minus 3. And then if I take natural logs to both sides, I'm going to get y for this side must equal the natural log of 4 divided by x minus 3. And so if that's the case then, then the inverse function must be equal to, and I just write that down, okay, the natural log of 4 over x minus 3. So that's how I'd go about finding then the inverse function. Now as for the domain, okay, of the inverse function, should be familiar with the fact that the domain of the inverse function is exactly the same as the range of the original function f of x. And we were asked that in the first part of the question. And we found out that it was that f of x had to be greater than 3. So the domain will be all x values greater than 3. I'll show you why in a moment via a graph, okay? And we've also got to be asked what is the range of this function. Well, the range will be equivalent to the domain of this function. So the range will be all values, not x that is real, but we just call it the inverse function. It's all those values that would be real values, okay? Now, if you can't see this, I did say that I'd show you the graphical explanation. So, if we were to look at the graph, okay, let's just put it up here, draw our axis, x-axis, y-axis. We were given this function, it looked something like this, okay, came down like so and off like that. There was an asymptote, okay, at y equals 3. So we just imagine that's the line there, y equals 3. So this is the graph of f of x, y equals f of x. Now when it comes to the inverse function, we're always looking to find a mirror image of this in the line y equals x. If I was to draw the line y equals x in, it'd be a line looking something like this, going through the origin. So that's the line y equals x. So if I take this line and reflect it in the line y equals x, it's going to be a line passing through this point here. So it's going to be, say, something like this. Okay, And the value on the x-axis here will be 3. So reflecting this graph, y equals f of x, in y equals x, is going to lead to a graph looking like this. If, it, if this was the asymptote and the graph approached it there, we're going to have it coming down like this. Okay, So it's going to be something like that, and then shooting off like that. Okay, 
So this will be y equals the inverse function of x. Now can you see that the domain here has got to be x is greater than 3. It was exactly the same as the range for y equals f of x. And when it comes to the range of the inverse function, all real numbers, that was exactly the same as the domain. Okay, there's our range. Okay, all values. Okay, all real values. It was the same as the domain that we have for y equals f of x. So, hope that's given you some idea then on that question.